Day 452 of the Ukrainian War Map, also known as the Russo-Ukrainian War. Jossie here, and today is another update as I take a simplified and down-to-earth approach to some of the most important happenings on the ground in Ukraine. So starting off, we'll take a quick look at those Russian losses once again today. And currently, Russia is sitting on more than 203,000 military personnel losses. Then when we take a look at the hardware losses, two tanks, a whopping 16 APVs, and a mammoth 29 artillery. With a great deal of disparity in these numbers, uh, moral of the story, Russia doesn't have a lot of tanks left over to expend. But I'll, I'll leave it at that for now. Then we'll move into the map and we'll start out in the Donbass, uh, Bakhmut in particular. Once again, a lot's happening here. As the uh, Russian military's employed Wagner PMC forces have taken more of central west Bakhmut. Now we'll zoom right in there. But the big old chunk in the middle here. And enough so uh, for them to feel like they could announce uh, as having captured uh, Bakhmut. All the meanwhile, the Ukrainian forces dismissed this assertion as being inaccurate. Although truly, there's not really much more to take of Bakhmut now anyway for the Russian forces. So the claims from the, the Wagner PMC boss Prigozhin stating Bakhmut is captured would be purely symbolic in any case, and indeed a, a pyrrhic victory at that, given the Russian cannon fodder losses involved in taking this 10 square mile or so city over the span of 10 months. But guess what? Prigozhin is basically saying it's a job well done, and he is he and his Wagner forces are going to vacate the city on the 25th of May. Now, I'll believe that when I see it, but do note, Russia's Wagner forces appear to be the best of what Russia has to offer on the battlefield, which is embarrassing to say. Uh, because of the, the 10 square miles in 10 months it took uh, for them to capture it in the first place. And the thing is, as soon as the Wagner PMC forces leave Bakhmut, Russia's defensive lines for the city may indeed start to really likely crumble, particularly in the central region there. Just as we've seen in the north and the south, where only true proper Russian forces are currently stationed at. Oh, and then to follow on from that, and you can see it right there on the map, Russia's southern flank has continued to crumble excessively in the last day or so, as the Ukrainian forces are clearly in a push to take Klishkivka back, that uh, little regional town there. And no need to take my word for it, as we also have the, the well, Russia's digitized map of developments in the region as well, which is roughly the same as the main map that I use anyway. But you know, with the amount of emphasis Russia places on capturing Bakhmut, you would think that Russia considers it to be, uh, you know, hundreds to hundreds of thousands of square miles of former Soviet bloc territory. Just as if Bakhmut was wedged right up against Germany or something, uh, like this doctorate image uh, map would have you believe. Then we'll move on down the map, a uh, little bit of a shorter video today, but uh, I'll move across to Mariupol in the Donbass there, all the way down. So here we go. So there was a number of Ukrainian strikes. Uh, one at an airfield, but also uh, the other at an underground bunker and command center as well. Now, it's still unknown which high-ranking Russian officials were inside uh, during that strike, but the strike was believed to have been caused by the newly UK-donated Storm Shadow air-launched missiles. And as for the airfield strike, it's believed that Russia moved some attack helicopters just a few hours earlier from Russia's Bryansk region in the north to the Mariupol airfield. And you know what? It probably doesn't hurt to show you the actual size of these Storm Shadow missiles. With a length of over 5 meters and a weight of about 1.3 tons, so equal to a small car, these weapons are just absolute baymoths. Then we'll move across to some hardware news for today. So an F-16 training coalition of operator nations, including the US, UK, France, Netherlands, Denmark, and even Portugal, 
are really pushing things into gear now with uh, official F-16 training for Ukrainian pilots said to commence in just mere weeks now. So a lot of support from, from NATO and the international community there to be sure. Then in some other hardware news, Italy secretly transferred a batch of B-1 Centuro wheeled tank destroyers to Ukraine, armed with the Otto Malara 105mm rifled gun. And if these machines look familiar, you wouldn't be wrong, as you might remember the French donated AMX-10 RCs that were donated to Ukraine, specifically also marketed as tank busting. Uh, also with the 105mm guns uh, on wheels as well. But it is my solemn belief that Russia is running low on tanks to expend, just like mentioned earlier there. So these types of bad boys might need to be used on Russian APVs or little infantry fighting vehicles. I mean, they'll take whatever they can get for lunch, really. Then in some other news, finally we have some footage of the partisans or rebels inside Russia who claim responsibility for many of the, let's say, smoking accidents inside Russia. They're far from being Putin supporters indeed. Uh, they, they just tend to hurt a lot of Russian logistics lines, for instance, there. And they even say currently there's upwards of 10,000 of them. So these are the Russians you would shout a round of vodkas to, for sure, at a bar. Then moving on to some other news. So Zelensky wrapped up a symbolically powerful uh, trip to the G7 summit in Japan over the weekend, where he rallied up support uh, in his defense of Ukraine and met face to face with some pretty high profile politician leaders as a result, as you might guess. Interestingly, uh, within just a few hours of touchdown, Zelensky had a meeting with Indian Prime Minister uh, Modi. And Modi, of which was uh, said to be extremely warm and welcoming in his rhetoric with Zelensky, but also with Modi saying that this war is not a matter of politics, but rather a matter of humanity and of human values. He also went on to say that... Uh, India would do everything uh, they could to help bring this war to an end, which is important stuff really uh, for him to say, as India is one of the only G7 nations, or at least G7 guest nations, since the outbreak of the war uh, last year, that actually increased its trade relations with Russia, as it bought up a whole lot of that sweet hydrocarbons, such as cheap Russian oil as India has otherwise appeared like a bit of a fence-sitter in the past with this war, so it does seem like some positive developments there as well. Then in another Russian military mobilization blunders of a sort, uh, so this one's a little bit different, but a mobilized Russian soldier who bought his own uniform and hadn't eaten in days, <laughs> common story there, hey? Uh, surrendered his military equipment in exchange for a, a chance to live in a normal country, he said. And that military equipment, it was a Pantsir S1 air defense system. So until now, the Pantsir S1 system has not been handed over for a reward. So that's uh, pretty keen stuff to see. Then in a couple of uh, quick funnies to round it all off for today, guys. So... Spotted in the wild was this Russian T-54 tank, uh, so a very old tank, uh, however it was missing its turret somehow, and cannon of course, and the tank hull was instead installed on it, uh, had a, uh, with a smaller S-60 auto cannon. Now I don't know if it came from the, the Russian makeshift tank factory like this, it's all they had, all they could spare in parts, or it was an in the field update due to turret damage from a Ukrainian drone perhaps, but this old 1950s tank with this old 1950s auto cannon, I mean forget Russia being the second best army in the world, it possibly couldn't even crack the top 10 with this type of mix and match ancient monstrosity. Then in a final funny here, so let's see, so I like this one. So we've got two advertisements in Russia. On the left, uh, first one says, get a real job. So recommending for Russians to voluntarily enlist in the army. And then to the right, uh, it says, in eternal glory of our fallen heroes. I mean, just <laughs> what? Was the Russian army's marketing team sent to the front lines as well? That's no way to sell voluntary recruitment. 
So thanks for watching guys. Like I said, bit of a shorter video today. I hope you guys don't mind too much. Uh, thanks for watching. Please comment, like, continue to subscribe if you haven't already. And I do hope to see all of you guys there in the next one. Cheers.